It, it, they, they, they are in the business of manipulating prices. Let, let's move on, please. Let's move on. Speaking of Goldman, um, they're in this headline. Goldman's trading advice to clients has been horrible this year. Remember, they had a perfect trading quarter last quarter. But apparently, if you were a client and you followed their advice, you did much worse. Apparently, seven of the investment bank's nine recommended top trades for 2010 have failed to pay off. Well, let me explain something how this works, having worked on Wall Street myself. All the losing trades that Goldman's doing on their prop desk, the proprietary desk, they dump in clients' accounts, basically. All the good trades they keep for themselves. So they've got 60 days of winners, and their clients have got seven out of nine losers. That's not by coincidence. That's not just a one in a trillion long shot. That's a designated f failure on the part of insiders uh, to share the suk uh, sucre with, the, uh, with their clients. But I want to go over some of them because they do sound like a monkey chose them. And there's, it's very famous that a monkey can do as well as most brokers. You would have lost 14% on their recommendation to buy the Polish Zloty against the Japanese yen. You would have lost 9.4% buying Chinese stocks in Hong Kong. And you would have lost 9.8% trading the British pound against the New Zealand dollar. Well, it's a cacophony of nonsensical trades that are put on uh, at the beginning of the quarter. And depending on how they turn out, they dump the losers and the recommendations and the poor suckers who have to eat it. And the winners go into their preferred political contacts down in Washington to influence policy decisions. And that's how you end up with a kleptocracy in America, funded, thank you very much, by Wall Street. <laughs> well, Wall Street and many of the banks around Europe have uh, you know, collapsed the global economy. We're clearly in the second wave down. This brings me to conspiracy of banks rigging states converged in mortgage crash. Court records in the broadest ever criminal investigation of public finance has shed new light on how Wall Street's biggest banks were cheating cities and towns during the same decade, i.e. 1998 through 2006, in which they were setting the stage for the global economic collapse with their $1 trillion in subprime mortgage-backed securities. Now, the court records reveal a nationwide conspiracy in which financial advisors to municipalities colluded with the Bank of America, Citigroup, J.P. Morgan Chase, Lehman Brothers, Wachovia, and 11 other banks. Many of these banks, are, of course, received TARP funds and are still in operation. Mm -hmm. The key phrase here is conspiracy, not conspiracy theory. No, no. outright conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. And price collusion. And of course, they all work together. And, of course, it's not a coincidence. And, of course, America is in the grips of domestic financial terrorists that is destroying the economy on behalf of a few insiders on Wall Street who are pilfering and committing massive larceny uh, for their own benefit, even though it's killing the country of their origin. That's why I refer to these people as suicide bankers. Well, this was in the municipal bond market, which is almost a $3 trillion market. And they defrauded the um, taxpayer around the United States of tens of billions of dollars. And they did this by rigging bids on auctions for so-called government investment contracts, known as GICs, according to the Justice Department. Now, a GIC is similar to a certificate of deposit, but its rates aren't advertised publicly. Instead, towns rely on advisory firms such as CDR Financial Products, which is named in this suit, to solicit competing offers. And now they apparently openly um, bribed these officials. On, they were talking about this. It was so open. It was on the phone calls, which they knew were being recorded. Yeah, it's, a, it's an open cesspool of financial fraud. Stacey Herbert, thanks so much once again for being on the Kaiser Report. <laughs> Thank you, Max. So now you know how other people, okay, and by the way, just so you know who Max Kaiser was, Max Kaiser came up with some of the computer trading models, and he knows about, you know, gee, how prices are made on the exchanges. But did you listen to what he said? Have, do you understand what's going on? Do you understand how these people have not only taken over your government, and they've got people with different names who like to change their names and not have a birth certificate, evidently, and they like to have those people as front men. <clears throat> so that you, the viewer, can get mad at them. I'm not so mad. I'm actually feeling sad for them. But I'm also feeling sad for you and for your wife and for your children and your grandchildren because all this debt, this is how they take countries down. This is what they did to Iceland. This is what they did to Argentina. This is what they did to Russia. 
Should I go through the list? This is what they did to Greece. This is what they're doing to Spain. Take, just watch. Stay tuned. Keep watching the show. Watch the early shows. So here we go. We'll keep on going, people. We're going to go with Gary Gensler. Gary Gensler. Take a look at him. He's another one of the crook banker buddies. Okay? Gensler was a Goldman Sachs partner. How interesting, huh? Who is Obama's Commodities Futures Trading Commission head? So now Goldman Sachs, former Goldman Sachs employees, is in charge of your Commodities Future Trading Commission. Gensler is the guy who, as former Treasury official, exempted $58 trillion credit default market from oversight. And he's Barry's choice. Don't forget who chose these people, okay? Those financial instruments played a key role in the global economic downturn and led to billions of dollars of profits for banks like Goldman Sachs, Sachs let alone Morgan. Let's not leave out, you know, all the B of A's. And, you know, why are we letting these bankers ruin our lives and our futures? How do wars get started? Who profits from wars? Yeah, maybe you should check the facts. Here we go. How about Michael Greenstone? Once again, we'll look at his ties. Another Hamilton Project guy, huh? Yeah, he was the fourth director of the Hamilton Project, but it's a small world when it comes to the Barry's cabinet. Okay, what you should know about the Hamilton Project, okay? The pro-corporatist think tank funded by Goldman Sachs and Robert Rubin, cleverly hidden in the Brookings Institution. Yeah, funny, you know, funny how all that goes. But check it out. Why don't you look up the Hamilton Project and find out what they're all about, okay? And know, too, that Senator Barack Obama was the inaugural speaker at the Hamilton Project. Rather interesting, huh? And he lavished praise on my friend Bob Rubin, okay, and called for cuts in entitlements, Social Security, and more NAFTA agreements. Yeah, wasn't Rahm Emanuel his, his chief of staff that's a dual citizen, not even a full American citizen, who works for foreign armies, Rahm Emanuel, okay? Didn't he also push that NAFTA thing with who? Who's our buddy? Who's our NAFTA buddy? Remember all these NAFTA people, okay? How about Robert Hormatz? Take a look at the face. Know a criminal banker when you see one, okay? The top economics official at the Obama State Department. Boy! We have economic officials in the State Department, okay? Hormat spent the prior 27 years at, guess where? GS, Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs. I'm sorry. I can't help it. It slips sometime. So 27 years at Goldman. Yeah, nice choice, Barry. Yeah, just so you know who chose these people. Because there was change. Was there change? And there was hope. Do you still have hope after you learn this? Okay. A Goldman executive as COO of the SEC's Enforcement Division. Why, Robert? Yeah. So the SEC has an enforcement division, and it's being forced by a Goldman Sachs guy whose company is ripping off and hasn't had a loss in 90 days. Yet their clients have had losses like seven to nine. <clears throat> seven out of nine. Rather interesting, huh? This is all consistent with the observation by Desmond Lachman, okay, previously chief emerging market strategist at Solomon Smith Barney and the IMF deputy director regarding Goldman Sachs' seeming lock on high-level U.S. Treasury jobs. Yeah, because that's the change you wanted. Oh, i got to play the piece. This is just a little clip with the people after, you know, Obama's speaking as a senator and he's running for president. Oh, he seems like so changed. I love the way he talks. It's like there was this Messiah worship. The media did a fantastic job at selling this man. But they changed his name for you, and he did too, you know? Because we didn't want to know what he was doing all through the 80s, did we? And by the way, when he got in office, what was the first thing he did besides bombing Pakistan, right, was to seal his records. Yeah, because we need an open, doesn't he say that a lot, an open government. We're going to let you look at laws that we pass on the weekend. <coughs> Don't even get me going on how you've been schnookered. So anyway, uh, the SEC has lodged a complaint against Goldman Sachs. Goldman's former vice president, president in charge of business intelligence, sits in the SEC's enforcement division, while Obama's former top lawyer, White House counsel, once again, Gregory Craig, you saw him, okay, has gone to defend Goldman Sachs. Isn't this amazing? We've got the fox watching the hen house. Let's look at Neil Kashkari. The guy looks evil. Don't take it. I mean, he's just got that evil look. Cash Carey, who's he tied to? Let's look at the ties. Hmm. Former vice president of Goldman Sachs in San Francisco, where he, he did what? He led Goldman's information technology security investment banking practice. 
That's a lot. So Cash Carey, don't forget him, okay, served under Treasury Secretary Paulson. Yeah, so that banker bailout, which was the biggest ripoff in history. Okay, but you got hope. Hope and change. Yeah, 